So we spent a pretty good portion of last week's show talking about how Nancy Pelosi was relentlessly and viciously going after freshman members of Congress, members of the squad, which includes Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and Ayanna Presley. And this week, somebody else in a very powerful position is choosing to single them out and target and attack them. It's Donald Trump. And what he's saying about them isn't just factually incorrect, it's mind-blowing. So this is what he tweeted about them on July 14th. So interesting to see, quote, progressive Democrat congresswomen who originally came from countries whose governments are a complete and total catastrophe, the worst, most corrupt, and inept anywhere in the world, if they even have a functioning government at all, now loudly and viciously telling the people of the United States, the greatest and most powerful nation on earth, how our government is to be run. Why don't they go back and help fix the totally broken and crime-infested places from which they came, then come back and show us how it's done. These places need your help badly. You can't leave fast enough. I'm sure that Nancy Pelosi would be very happy to quickly work out free travel arrangements. So he's saying, how dare these women tell us, the greatest country on the planet, how our country is to be run? Hey dipshit, they're members of Congress. They reside in a co-equal branch of government. So first of all, your criticism isn't even valid because they are running the country. Second of all, it's also not valid because these are not immigrants. The only one who is an immigrant is Ilhan Omar. But Rashida Tlaib, AOC, and Ayanna Presley, they were born in the United States. So when you're telling them to go back to the country that they came from, that doesn't even fucking make sense. But we all know exactly why he's doing it. Because these are women who are brown and black, so they can't possibly be Americans. It must obviously have been the case that they moved here from a foreign country, and now these immigrants are telling us how to run our country, which is the greatest country ever? Absolutely unacceptable. See, I can criticize America and say, let's make America great again, implying that it's not currently great, but if they criticize America, they must hate our country. I mean, this is such an overt racist attack that it's difficult to really even supplement this with commentary. It just speaks for itself. But Obviously, there were people who took some issue with what he said here and called it racist because it pretty obviously is. But then the response from people on the right, they said that individuals who said this is racist are actually the ones who are race baiting. So you're not allowed to call Donald Trump's comments here racist. Otherwise, you're a race baiter. Except what was his original tweet? Was that not race baiting? Like, you can't call things that are racist, racist, because that's offensive. See, this anti-SJW hysteria has come full circle. It originally started because people are too sensitive. You know, you're not allowed to speak out against things that are offensive. But now, saying that something is offensive has become offensive in and of itself. <laughs> it's all come full circle. But I digress. Getting back to Donald Trump. So, Rather than apologizing for this insanely idiotic tweet that he put out, which nobody expected him to, but rather than apologizing, he said, no, it's actually them who need to apologize to me. Not kidding. So here's what he tweeted out afterwards. When will the radical left congresswomen apologize to our country, the people of Israel, and even to the office of the president for the foul language they have used and the terrible things they have said? So many people are angry at them and their horrible and disgusting actions. So his response is pretty much, um, no you. <laughs> Mr. President, um, don't you think you should apologize for saying something so egregious? No, you. I didn't say something outrageous. They've said things that are outrageous. So they should apologize to me, to the office of the presidency, which means to me, to the people of America, and to Israel. Why are you randomly invoking Israel? Like, you're outraged because they're criticizing America. But then he brings up Israel. Is Israel, like, the 51st state? Why are we talking about Israel exactly, Trump? The man is a fucking moron. 
But at a press conference, he doubled down, and he didn't just double down. He said things that are even more absurd and things that are downright dangerous. If you're not happy here, you can leave. And that's what I say all the time. That's what I said in a tweet, which I guess some people think is controversial. A lot of people love it, by the way. A lot of people love it. But if you're not happy in the U.S., if you're complaining all the time, very simply, you can leave. You can leave right now. But I mean, I look at the one, I look at Omar. I don't know. I never met her. I hear the way she talks about Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda has killed many Americans. She said, you can hold your chest out. You can, when I think of America, huh? when I think of Al-Qaeda, I can hold my chest out. When she talked about the World Trade Center being knocked down, some people, you remember the famous some people. Uh, these are people that, in my opinion, hate our country. And in one case, you have somebody that comes from Somalia, which is a failed government, a failed state, who left Somalia, who ultimately came here, and now is a congresswoman who's never happy, says horrible things about Israel, hates Israel, hates Jews, hates Jews. They're socialists, definitely. As to whether or not they're communists, I would think they might be. But a politician you? that hears somebody where we're at war with Al-Qaeda and sees somebody talking about how great Al-Qaeda is. Pick out her statement. That was Omar. How great Al-Qaeda is. Sure. These are people that hate our country. But, but hey John, they hate our country. But They hate it, I think, with a passion. Okay. Now, it's possible I'm wrong. The voter will decide. But when I hear the way they talk about our country, when I hear the anti-Semitic language they use, when I hear the hatred they have for Israel and the love they have for enemies like Al-Qaeda, then you know what? I will tell you that uh, I, do, I do not believe this is good for the Democrat Party. It doesn't concern you that many people saw that tweet as racist and that uh, white nationalist groups are finding common cause with you on that point. It doesn't concern me because many people agree with me. It's insufferable listening to this idiot speak. But essentially, the takeaway is, if there's any takeaway, you're not allowed to ever criticize America, ever. Otherwise, I'm going to say that you hate us if you criticize us. But please, you know, forget the fact that my slogan literally implies that America isn't perfect and that maybe criticism is in fact, um, warranted, but you probably shouldn't criticize America, and you especially should not criticize America if you're black or brown. Only white people who are the real Americans should be able to criticize America. But let's, let's get to what he said about Ilhan Omar, because this is when he took the situation and made a bad situation exponentially worse. He claimed that she, quote, hates Jews, and then he lied and said that she praised Al-Qaeda. She absolutely never praised Al-Qaeda. But he's saying here, she praised Al-Qaeda and she hates Jews. Do you understand how dangerous this is? He's telling his low information racist supporters that this person is dangerous. We have an Al-Qaeda sympathizer in Congress who also hates Jews. I mean, she gets death threats on a daily basis, as does AOC. But the president of the United States is saying that a sitting member of Congress praised Al-Qaeda. I mean, this is, this is deranged. This is absolutely insane. One, because it's a lie. And two, because this could get her killed, literally. Why are we not talking about invoking the 25th Amendment? He's mentally unstable. Somebody with a brain wouldn't do something like this. This is not normal behavior for anyone, let alone a fucking president. He's communicating to all of his supporters that you should be afraid of Ilhan Omar because she's an Al-Qaeda sympathizer, she hates Jews, and also she hates America. And she's not one of us. So if she doesn't like the country, then um, she can leave. And anyone else who criticizes America, they can leave too, even if they're American citizens. What he's saying, the rhetoric that he's using, it sounds incredibly similar to a segment that we saw on Fox News from Tucker Carlson, somebody who is very influential on Donald Trump, somebody who Donald Trump watches. 
So this is why when I talked about that segment, I said that Tucker Carlson is dangerous and he's a white supremacist because what he says resonates with the president. And now we see Donald Trump echoing the same sentiment about Ilhan Omar. What a bizarre and just morally grotesque thing that we are seeing before our very eyes. And this isn't like a closed door meeting where he said all of this about Ilhan Omar and the squad. He said this at a fucking press conference. And yet we're not allowed to say that this is racist. Otherwise, we're race baiting. Unreal. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now, members of the squad, all four congresswomen, they held their own joint press conference where they responded and they basically said, look, this is a distraction. He can't defend himself based on policy and he can't debate us on the substance of the issues that we talk about. So this is why he frequently just goes after us because of our identities. This is what they said. I encourage the American people and all of us in this room and beyond, to not take the bait. This is a disruptive distraction from the issues of care, concern, and consequence to the American people. He would love nothing more than to divide our country based on race, religion, gender, orientation, or immigration status. Because this is the only way he knows he can prevent the solidarity of us working together across all of our differences. The only way to prevent us confronting the problems our country is facing, whether it is health care, climate change, student debt, or our endless wars. I am not surprised that he used, uses the rhetoric that he does when he violates international human rights and takes thousands of children away from their families. I am not surprised that he has turned our public education system under the leadership of Betsy DeVos into a cash cow to enrich himself and his friends. I am not surprised when he corrupts via the Secretary of Transportation. I am not surprised at what he's doing. But I also know that we're focused on making it better because we don't leave the things that we love. And when we love this country, what that means is that we propose the solutions to fix it. We cannot allow these hateful actions by the president to distract us from the critical work to hold this administration accountable to the inhumane conditions at the border that is separating children from their loved ones and caging them up in illegal, horrific conditions. Now, when people say, if you say a negative thing about the policies in this country, you hate this country. To me, it sort of speaks to the hypocrisy. And Alex and I were talking about this. When this president ran and until today, he talked about everything that was wrong in this country and how he was going to make it great. And so for him to condemn us and to say we are un-American for wanting to work hard to make this country be the country we all deserve to live in, complete hypocrisy mm -hmm. absolutely and I, I i don't think it would have changed anything because first of all he made statements that were blatantly untrue so whether he was citing comments or not citing comments if he didn't have what he wanted to say he would make it up this president operates in complete bad faith he does not operate in in good faith weak minds and leaders challenge loyalty to our country in order to avoid challenging and debating the policy. This president does not know how to make the argument that Americans do not deserve health care. He does not know how to defend his policies. So what he does is attack us personally. And that is what this is all about. He can't look a child in the face and he can't look all Americans in the face and justify why this country is throwing them in cages. So instead, he tells us that I should go back to the great borough of the Bronx and make it better. And that's what I'm here to do. Now, on top of what they said there, um, they also called for his impeachment, not because he said these things, but they went on to list the numerous crimes 
that he's committed, the numerous violations of the Constitution that he has committed and is currently committing. Because the day he was sworn in office, since he didn't put his businesses in a blind trust, he was in violation of the Emoluments Clause. So I think it was important for them to also bring up impeachment. Now, everything that they said here, incredibly, incredibly important. Because when you juxtapose Donald Trump's policy agenda with theirs, there's no contest. Like, he can't compete with them based on the merits of their arguments. He just can't. Because everything he's saying is incredibly unpopular. Tax cuts for the rich? You know, taking away health care? So, what does he do? He has to question their loyalty to the country. So, what they're saying is correct. But the difference is that they can make this very persuasive argument, this counter-argument, but Donald Trump has the bully pulpit. He's the president of the United States. So any and everything that he says will automatically be 10 times louder than anything that they say. So like, this is such an unbelievable story to me. It's like Donald Trump, he's known to say idiotic things because I think his mental capacity is rapidly declining. So at what point are we going to hold him accountable? When will Nancy Pelosi actually use the power that she has to do something? Well, the answer is never, because she announced that this is what she's going to be doing in response to Donald Trump's comments here. She announced that they're going to be voting on a House resolution to condemn his comments. So this is definitely going to put him in his place way more than impeachment ever could. Now, I'm not saying that we impeach him because of this. I'm just saying you have more than enough ammunition with regard to impeachment but you're not using it. You're holding a House vote on a resolution that will be functionally useless to condemn his remarks. Nancy Pelosi is beyond hopeless. She's so useless. This is the best that she can come up with. See, this is why Donald Trump continues to do things like this. It's because he knows there will never be any consequences for his actions and things that he says that are downright dangerous tie his hands he's in violation of the emoluments clause in the Mueller report there were 10 different instances where he committed obstruction he violated campaign finance laws michael cohen brought the check and showed it to everyone tie his hands make it so he can't do anything but think about impeachment. So he's not thinking about maybe we should bomb Iran. Maybe I should target these female members of Congress and suggest that they're not loyal to the country and that they hate our country. Tie his hands. So all he can focus on is impeachment, not only because morally and legally speaking, that's the correct course of action, but because also as a strategy, it's the right thing to do. But of course, you know, you can never expect Nancy Pelosi to, the, to do the right thing because her donors don't want her to impeach. So she's going to listen to them over everyone else. But I don't want to make this about Nancy Pelosi. This is about Donald Trump. And what he said here is downright dangerous.